Hi guys and welcome to my review of the Huawei Mate S, which is in my opinion one of the most underrated phones in 2015. If you want to find out why exactly, let's go ahead and watch the full review. Let's start off with the design and build quality, size comparison as always. First here with the Sony Xperia Z3, a 5.2 incher, you will see it is wider, it is also taller and actually a little bit thinner, which is surprising to see. Comparing it with something more similar sized, the OnePlus One, and you will see it is narrower, it is shorter and a lot thinner. And this thinner makes it one of the, if not the most compact 5.5 inches, at least the ones that I've used so far, which is really nice to see. One hand use was actually quite okay. The great thing was we have almost parallel sides and very grippy ones, which made it easy to hold on to it securely. That was something that I really like to see. Also the slight little curve towards the back that makes it easy to hold on to it. Same goes for the front where we have a nice little curve with 2.5D glass so you have a really nice comfortable feeling in the hand. But this comfortable feeling in the hand is not just because the quite compact and nice design but also because it feels so super premium and substantial because you can try to bend it, it won't squeak, it won't bend, it won't do anything, it feels just super sturdy. The only thing that could get a few dings and nicks from time to time are the chamfered edges where you can see after a while of using it you will get a few nicks here and there but that is to be expected on any chamfered edge other than that i'm absolutely happy the aluminum bag from time to time can be slippery but i was actually surprised that it wasn't an issue mostly maybe because due to the compact size and due to the really grippy sides other than that we have the fingerprint reader that works ridiculously fast because you just tap onto it and as you can see the screen turns on it's, it's really crazy fast, but I don't like the position so much because if I use it like this to turn it on, then I can't really use it anymore and have to completely regrip, which is a little bit of an odd thing for me and not the biggest fan of that personally, but I guess that is more of a personal thing and not something I would blame the phone for. Other than that, here on the top we have the microphone headphone jack, on the left side we have the micro SD card and SIM card tray in one. On the bottom we have two speaker grills, but only the right one is the speaker, mic USB here at the bottom. As for the buttons here, I gotta say the position is pretty much perfect, very natural feel for me with the power button, it works really nice. And you can also really easily touch or find the volume rockers. They can be distinguished quite easy, I had really bare barely any miss hits what is to be noticed though the buttons can be pressed a little bit easier than i know it from other phones this can be good or bad because the good thing is is if i was in my browser i could easily switch the tabs and i could easily switch the phone on and off without pushing it out of my hand so this was quite nice to see but maybe a little bit stiffer could been good but that is my personal taste once again so overall i gotta say we also have here the sensors with the notification LED, which is quite faint and hard to see in brighter light, but at least it's there, this is nice to see. So, to sum it up, really comfortable feel in hand, super premium, very compact, very, very nice. I didn't think they could make it any better, so I'm absolutely happy with that. So, let's check the display here, unlock it, and see what we've got. We got a 5.5 inch AMOLED display. I have also the option here for color temperature control you have a slider to go from warm to cold i did set it all the way up to warm because otherwise the white would look very purple here on the camera as you can see it is still very sharp i don't have any issue because of the great contrast ratio 1080p on 5.5 inches is still more than sharp enough the great thing here is the white balance because you can set it up the way you want it and if you set it right you will have a great experience the blacks are amoled so nothing to improve here any further they are amazing in terms of colors it's really nice to see the great calibration here because they are slightly boosted they are slightly oversaturated but far from any samsung level it is still quite natural for this oversaturated level and i'm okay because if you don't want the super samsung saturation but the nice pop and vibrant colors of an AMOLED display, this is a real nice balance. The maximum brightness was okay, not the very best one. Sunlight readability was acceptable. As you can see here, viewing angles are absolutely stable up to maybe this angle here where you will see a little bit of some rainbow effect, which is perfectly normal for any AMOLED screen. So let's check what we got in terms of sound then.
Yes, you can block the speaker on the bottom right, but as you can see, when I use it like this in landscape or when I do play games, I actually didn't, never did, which is really nice to see. In terms of the sound, I was also happily, satisfyingly surprised because very loud, I never didn't even use in most cases 100%. A little bit more reserves would be nice, but they are definitely not needed. The sound is also very rich, quite full, a little bit of bass, very strong mids and high that are very clear and never really distort. So overall, really fine with the sound. Front firing would still be better, but for a button facing, this is pretty much as good as it can get. In terms of performance, let's check what the Kiri 945 can do. In the browser, as you can see here, super smooth, super buttery smooth, also very responsive. And the great thing here is all my battle gestures got accepted just fine. No problems here at all. Very responsive to the touch, very snappy, very zippy and just brilliantly smooth. If we now go into Palabra, all here fine as well. Let's get into one. It loads all the things very, very fast and just super smooth and snappy. So no complaints here at all. Multitasking is also very capable because as you can see here, it didn't really have to reload. Three gigabytes of RAM do a great job here. No problems at all. It is quite lightweight in terms of performance. So the Kirin and the three gigabytes of RAM do a great job. No complaints here at all. What about the gaming performance here real quick? Let's go into Riptide, the app that I usually always use because it has the fastest loading times. Let's see what we've got here. And here I gotta say the performance is great here, absolutely as well. Somewhere between a maybe Snapdragon 805 and 810, maybe even slightly towards closer to 810, which is pretty much the performance in general. Very, very smooth, little to no lag, very high frame rates, almost no stutters, very consistent performance, capable in multitasking for games, in apps, in, in the system, no problems here ever at all. So I gotta say, I'm really surprised and impressed how well the Kirin 935 did manage to perform. Absolutely fine here. So it is one of the best performing devices that I had, especially in terms of multitasking and consistent performance. Overall, very, very smooth and maybe just slightly below the A10, but not with the issue of throttling. Because yes, it gets warm, that pretty much every device does, but it didn't get nearly as warm as the A10 did. So all fine here. As for the battery life, a full charge needs about one hour and 50 minutes. And for the battery life, I gotta say one thing. Standby rain was okay, but not really great with slightly over a half percent an hour. This can be done better. The great thing though is the battery life still was very solid. In mixed use with mobile data and Wi-Fi, I got solid four hours of screen time, sometimes even more in one time, almost even five hours of screen time. What I got usually on Wi-Fi only was solid four and a half, close to even five hours over the course of one day. Two day battery life is maybe possible with some lighter moderate use. But overall, I'm happy. Now, let's get to the software and show the first thing of that I'm not so happy until you disable it. And that is, once I see the power saving feature. Because you have two options that you should definitely change. One is close excessively power intensive apps. You can enable that so it will kill off intensive apps in the background. But what you should definitely disable is power intensive prompt. Because if you have that enabled, what I did have for the first week that I used this device, you will constantly get notifications that show you this app is draining way too much. You should kill it. This was a bummer to see. We also have a performance and smart mode. And I would definitely recommend you to use performance mode because what it does it doesn't happen in full brightness mode that i have right now here for the review but if you maybe have set it to 50 percent then jump into any browser not just chrome but also for example naked browser or any other browser it dims the screen by at least 10 percent which was annoying because i had to actually use a higher brightness than i need to because i use the browser a lot this is odd because usually you could disactivate it with using the performance mode, but on this phone, it seemed to have still some kind of re re relevance to the light sensor because sometimes it did dim, sometimes it didn't. Other than that, what do we get in terms of software? We get here the slide up menu here for quick shortcuts for the camera, flashlight, calculator and so on. You have also have phone things here. Other than that, we have the quick settings that can be adjusted in terms of the other, but can't be deleted. You can also change the navigation bar. Other than that, I gotta say, not too much in terms of gimmicky features, all fine here. There are a few useful things like 
some motion controls, some voice controls and all that. What we get though, but I deleted them also already, but you can see them here. We have too much bloat pre-installed. So a lot of games, a lot of apps, you can uninstall most of them, not all of them though. So I gotta say, you definitely have to get used to the look and feel of the UI here. But after using it for almost two weeks now and having used more Huawei devices now lately, I am getting slowly used to it, but I would still say it's one of the weaker UIs and they definitely need improvement here. They did hire one guy from Apple. We will see if that will help here. What else do we have? We have EMUI 3.1 with 5.1.1. So pretty much still the latest one and Marshmallow update was already announced. So the software, once you get used to it, is definitely capable, is solid, does the job, but it definitely needs some time to get used to it. So about the camera now. The camera, once you have good light, produces really great shots. I didn't have good weather here lately, so the shots maybe look a little bit more dull than they usually do. But once you get good shots, they are very, very sharp. A little bit overexposed sometimes if you maybe tap to focus it gets a little bit over or oversaturated even I mean overexposed but the shots are really great very natural colors very good color exposure low light shots were a little bit more blurry and grainy but still quite okay considering that it is low light where I'm not that happy is the video performance because as you can see very wobbly movement there was no autofocus, at least I couldn't get it to work at all. I don't know why. It has object focus. Once you tap to it, it will stay put on this. But that's pretty much it. You will have to focus manually. And also the video quality, if you see that already, it looks more like maybe 360p or 480p. Over, over, not over sharpened and very, very blurry actually. So not that happy with that one. But just for the pictures in good lighting and in normal lighting it's a very good camera for videos not so much okay let's break things down design and build quality absolutely brilliant very thin very compact premium substantial and comfortable in the hand is what makes it for me the best feeling in hand phablet that i've reviewed so far the display absolutely brilliant as well because nicely saturated slightly just boosted but still maintaining an overall natural look great viewing angles good enough brightness Everything is great and I really like the color temperature control to make the white exactly like I wanted to and we still have pitch black AMOLED blacks <laughs> Nothing further to say the sound absolutely convincing as well loud enough in pretty much all the cases Nice placement because I never really blocked it even though it's not on the front and quite a rich and full sound So overall really really good Performance absolutely satisfying here as well because very fast, very smooth, very consistent and great multitasking capabilities. Also, the gaming experience was absolutely fine. The Kirin did a great job, didn't overheat or anything like that. Job done well. The battery life was also very convincing. About four hours in mixed use, in four and a half to maybe five hours on Wi-Fi only use with a standby drain slightly over half a percent. Absolutely fine here, nothing to complain. Actually quite a good outcome. In terms of the software, I gotta say, it needs some getting used to, but once you get over this little hurdle, you will actually know to appreciate the features. It's nothing really gimmicky. Bloat apps, okay, yes. Other than that, about the XDA qualities, root, I guess, should come soon, but I wouldn't really count on any custom ROM support or anything like that. The last thing to talk about would be the camera. Four picks, it was absolutely great, very sharp, nice exposure, nice color balance, and everything that was really great. Just the video quality itself wasn't really that impressive, quite blurry, autofocus didn't work right, and we had this quite wobbly video. So that was the only downside here. The last thing to talk about would be the price. Because here in Germany, it just recently fall fell from 600 euros to 520, which makes the value a lot better and brings it way closer to something like the Nexus 6P and maybe the Moto X style. If the difference would be bigger, the phone itself on its own would be worth the price. But you also always have to think about if it's worth the extra money for what you get. I would say if you want a really thin and compact phablet that almost feels like a phone and you are okay with the price, you don't really do anything wrong because the overall experience was really great. The screen, the display, the sound, the build quality and all that was just brilliant. But you have to know if it's worth it because I think especially something like the Huawei 6P could be one of the biggest 
alternatives because it's quite a big competitor with even better specs in some aspects. So you really have to figure that out on your own. You know the pros and cons, otherwise I don't have really anything to say. If you have something to say, if you've maybe used so far or anything like that, leave it in the comments down below if you have any questions. The same. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel. That was it. Okay, until next time. Bye.